I recently left my job working in a supermarket, right? And I'd worked in a Ooh. supermarket all the way, like, through uni, and then for a couple of years after, because I'd done a degree in philosophy. And <laughs> it's, I always find it quite difficult to try to balance working life with my studies. Like, studying philosophy, you need to read all these, like, esoteric texts, asking the big questions, like, you know, what is the nature of reality? Is there a god? Are we even here? And then I need to go in and make sure I was doing a good job tidying the ready meals in. <laughs> My manager came round going, look at this state in that lasagna. And I'd be going, how do you know that lasagna even exists? <laughs> <laughs> like a lot of people, uni is my first time getting interested in politics as well. Like, I always remember reading the Communist Manifesto by Karl Marx, and it was talking about the exploitation of the working class. And I'd get into my job in the supermarket, <laughs> try and start my revolution there. <laughs> Telling my boss, I think the people who stack the shelves should own them. <laughs> and everybody started calling me Shea Gavazda. <laughs> but I've left that job now. I don't like to say I quit. I prefer to say that I stood down. <laughs> no, because it's just... It just sounds more prestigious to say you stood down from a job, doesn't it? Because, like, you only ever really hear about someone standing down from a job. It's kind of high-profile one, don't you? Like a politician or a football manager. Like, I've never just heard about someone standing down from their positions like a joiner for Glasgow City Council. <laughs> and do you know why? Because you would never get away with that in the job centre. Like, imagine getting in there like, so why was it you quit your last job exactly? And you're like, I think you'll find I stood down. <laughs> and I'm just taking the position as far as I could possibly go in the three weeks that I was there. <laughs> and I just want to spend more time with my family, which is convenient, because I've had to move back in my mum and dad, so... <laughs> I went to visit my gran the other day. My gran started seeing some weird things recently, like, at Christmas time, she was saying to me, oh, Mark, did you hear? You're not even allowed to call Santa Father Christmas anymore in case someone gets offended. I'm like, gran, who's going to get offended? You don't have anyone to talk to. <laughs> And she goes, oh, Mark, have you heard about these vegans? She calls vegans vegans. She, she's heard about these vegans. They're locking arms and blocking people from buying meat in supermarkets. And I was going, I worked in a supermarket for years. I've never seen that in my life, right? I said, that is not happening, Gran. What, where are you even hearing this? And she said, oh, they've been saying it on that Good Morning Britain. And I've realised that for the past wee while, Piers Morgan has been radicalising my Gran. <laughs> Every morning, she wakes up and hears his drivel going into her mind. It's like she started hanging about with a bad crowd. I'm like, Gran, you need to start hanging about with Dan Walker off BBC Breakfast pronto. <laughs> I bumped into my first ever girlfriend recently, and it was a bad place to bump into her. I bumped into her a coin star. Now, <laughs> and she came over, she's like, oh, Mark, how you doing? I'm like, me, I'm, I'm great. I've nearly got 20 quid here, actually. I was <laughs> going swimmingly. She was the first girl that ever dumped me, actually, right? When you get dumped or you get rejected, it's hard not to feel bitter or resentful towards the person that's done it. But as I've got older, I've realised that you shouldn't hate someone that dumps you, right? It's like, you shouldn't hate someone that dumps you, because if someone dumps you, at least they liked you for a while. <laughs> Which is more than you can be said for almost any other person that you've ever met in your entire life. Like, think about it. Most people that you meet don't give you the time of day. Like, if someone's dumped you, they're in that tiny percentage of the population that have liked you enough to take your number, go on a date with you, maybe even have slept with you. So if they decide they don't want to see you anymore, you shouldn't be hateful towards them. You should be just grateful towards them for ever liking you in the first place. Like, <laughs> the next time someone turns around to you and goes, listen, I don't think we should see each other anymore, you should just be like, well, I can only thank you for everything you've done. <laughs> <laughs>